Hello everyone, welcome to Digital Marketing Jam Podcast. The one-stop destination to explore the latest happenings, strategies, tools, techniques and case studies in the digital marketing domain. I'm your host Prince and we have Andrew Jenkins, founder and CEO of Voltera with us today. Andrew has taught social media strategies for the enterprise at the University of Toronto for nine years. He is the author of Social Media Marketing for Business, Scaling an Integrated Social Media Strategy Across Your Organization. He is also a former filmmaker who produced a documentary for the Toronto International Film Festival, the Melbourne and Sydney Film Festivals, and toured with Lola Pelsi. Hi, Andrew. A warm welcome on our show. Good to be here. We are excited to have you on our show and discuss an important topic that is the, some of the important metrics that we can use to measure the social media. So, to start off our conversation of today, uh, you know, if you can just introduce yourself to the audience and you can let us know about your corporate journey that you did. Uh, beyond what you've already shared uh, in the introduction, so as you mentioned, I run a company called Volterra. It's a social media marketing agency. We focus predominantly on outsourced social media management. And as we like to say, we tweet so you don't have to or we X, so you don't have to now that with the name change. Uh, and uh, we work with um, startups, uh, mid to larger enterprises. Uh, we work with you know, digital marketing teams as additional bench strength behind the scenes. Uh, we also get white labeled by other service providers who bundle us as part of a larger service offering. Uh, and uh, have been doing that for the last uh, 15 years. Uh, do a lot of work in B2B, corporate, Nonprofit um, and uh, also a sweet spot in regulated industries like financial services. We only focus on social media management. Uh, we don't build websites or email newsletters. Um, nothing. There's nothing wrong with those uh, services. Uh, we have found that most of our clients, where they have been challenged or have struggled, is establishing and maintaining a consistent social media strategy and social media operations. Okay, uh, so uh, since you have been into this industry for a kind of while, so you know if you can help us understand that what is the current status of social media uh, compared to the previous fifteen years back, and why it is important for business. If you can just help the audience know. Well, I mean, social. I mean, the internet came was just emerging around nineteen ninety three, well, the early nineties, depending on what you define as the internet. You know, bulletin boards, Prodigy, um, Gopher. There was a lot of, I'll call it text-based. Um, but as bandwidth uh, became more readily, or higher bandwidth became more readily available and richer media could be supported, then, you know, video exploded. And then YouTube came along. Uh, and then um, Facebook started, you know, at, at colleges and then, you know, spilled out from academia. And then, you know, Twitter got launched at South by Southwest in 2007 and took off from there. And so some social platforms like Twitter um, became a bit of a, a utility for dissemination of news and information. Facebook, you know, evolved into a platform for keeping in touch with friends and family. MySpace came and went. Uh, Google Plus came and went. Uh, Peach and Path have come and gone. Um, there's you know, been a number. Um, uh, Clubhouse is still around, but you know after its initial heat, you know it's sort of uh, fallen back into a bit of the background. Hopefully, the same doesn't fall, uh, the same fate does not uh, befall uh, Threads. We'll see. Uh, but Threads has just launched their their uh, web or browser based version, so hopefully that will make a difference. So. You know, I guess to sum it all up, we've gone from a text-based platform for text-based communication to richer media, um, you know, entertainment, um, high stickiness. People are consuming more content through TikTok than they are on Netflix or 
um, you know, the regular digital or the sort, the regular in real life platforms like the newspaper have gone by the wayside and people are getting their news through social. It's just, it's just a, sh a huge shift in behavior uh, and how we, uh, uh, how we seek information. And definitely. So why do you think that, uh, you know, definitely it has a cost a lot. So why do you think that it is important for businesses to have a strong presence on social media? Well, this is where people are, are spending their time. So if they're not spending the time, you know, if they're not reading a newspaper, it's not much of a much point in uh, putting an ad in the newspaper. Uh, if they're not going to conferences the same way that they used to, or companies are sending one person to a conference to bring all the learning back for the rest of the team and conferences aren't getting any cheaper to exhibit at. Uh, and, you know, um, increasingly I'm finding for conferences that I've spoken at where as part of my speaking, I get to exhibit, you're getting inundated with job seekers and other vendors that are there to pitch you as opposed to, you know, the potential of new, new clients. So it's the, the, the proverbial fish where the fish are. And so if they're on social, you need to be on social, but not every platform is conducive to, to who you are as a business. If you're not going after the you know teenagers and early, and, um, early 20s, folks in their early 20s, maybe Snapchat is not for you. Um, it's not much of a B2B platform, but it's very, very sticky uh, in terms of uh, for communication and, and engagement uh, for, of a, for a certain age group. Uh, Instagram has very, very high organic engagement. Uh, but again, it skews to, you know, um, 20s and 30s and early 40s. Facebook is seen to be the platform for old people, um, but it has the biggest audience and has the biggest reach. And so you can't ignore it. And it's from a paid campaign point of view, it's probably the least expensive for doing experimentation. LinkedIn is the proverbial professional network and B2B. Um, 800 million members globally, but a very, very small percentage of the membership share content and a very, very small percentage are active. Now, if that group that is active is who you're going after, then great. But uh, I'm not being negative on, I don't want to sound, uh, I want to qualify this. I'm not trying to be negative about LinkedIn. I owe my career to LinkedIn. It's an, you know, it's an, you know, critical platform for B2B. But it's not a, uh, it's a very, it's still in some cases quite niche. You have this big member base and a very, very small um, percentage are active. But if you can get enough business from the active group, then you have no worries. And you still, then you now, uh, before I forget, you have uh, Twitter, now X. It's been going through some turmoil, but it's, uh, you know, still, still around. And then you have TikTok and threads and TikTok is, you know, ridiculously high engagement, uh, still you know, organically. Um, but again, if you're a business, not, all, you don't have to be on all of them, but I don't think you're, you're going to do well on being on just one. And each platform has their nuance and their requirements. You can't be on TikTok without producing video period. So, if you can't, um, you know, meet the minimum requirements, then perhaps just focus on. Totally said. Uh, now, since if we see like most of the social media platforms, whether it might be for the Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, or let's say even X or you know Twitter, we see that more of like most of the social media platforms are focusing on their paid version. Like if I say X, now they are giving a kind of verified the blue text, same is the case for the Instagram, for the other platforms that they are focusing more on the paid part or, the, or how they can monetize their platform. In this changing scenario, how can businesses grow their presence organic on these social media? Well, uh, I'm going to have to be very blunt. If you're setting up a Facebook page today um, from, from you know, just a standing start or from, from zero, you cannot have much success, if any, uh, 
of building that page from scratch without doing paid. You are competing for attention. So if you can't um, get out in front of people by doing paid, it'll be extremely hard for your uh, page to be discovered. Unless you have a, you know, a strong established presence on other channels, have a huge email distribution list from which you can notify people, hey, by the way, we're on Facebook if you want to follow us there. It's increasingly hard to um, you know, build a presence on social without doing paid. Now, once you get the flywheel spinning and build momentum, your organic content efforts can actually serve you rather well. But again, it's really, really challenging. The, the rare instance is TikTok. You don't have to have a huge following to have a video take off. But it still comes down to What's the video about? Is it good content? Is it funny? Is it entertaining? Is it engaging? If it's none of those, then it's not going to take off. Is it informative? Is it helpful? Um, but you know, I use Facebook as the example. It's, it has the, the most reach of all of them um, globally. But if you're setting up a Facebook page today for your business, you better have a budget for paid. It's going to be a real uh, challenge. Okay, uh, so since you have mentioned about the platforms, like if someone is starting from the scratch, what about let's say if someone have reached a milestone of around let's say yeah fifty thousand or let's say ninety five thousand or around one lakh twenty five thousand, so somewhere somewhere around those range, if they have this much amount of followers, still they need the paid part or they can have a kind of you know if they are producing good content then the organic can help them. Well, so first of all, um, I would, um, depending on your audience, so if you're B2B, for you to get a 50,000 or 95,000 audience anywhere is highly unlikely unless you're doing paid unless, or unless you're a global brand. So if you're a, so I'll, I'll say, you know, um, my company, Volterra, you know, are we a global brand? No. Can we serve clients in multiple jurisdictions you know, outside of Canada? Absolutely. Um, but, you know, B2B brands don't tend to get the following that a consumer or um, brand does. So I'm not, my company is not Coca-Cola. My company is not Duolingo, those sorts of things. So it's going to be very challenging. Even if you, or, you know, and it's not about the followers. You know, if you have a hundred thousand followers, and your engagement rate is abysmal, or your conversion rate is abysmal, or like, you know, they just don't they don't take any action. So, like a lot of people in the early days for a Facebook page, like our page and get uh, entered a chance to win an iPad, they came for the iPad, not because they like you. So, you know, is a like from someone who's never going to buy from you worth it? Or is a like from a hundred people versus a hundred thousand, and those hundred are loyal repeat buyers. So you know, a lot of people follow Kim Kardashian because they just want to know what's happening, and, they, and in some cases, it's out of you know um, uh, cynical curiosity. Uh, it's not necessarily that they're going to buy something that she recommends. So you've got to set your expectations. You know, why do I want to like? Those are vanity metrics. There's really three things that you should be looking at from a metrics point of view. The first C is, I refer to it as the three C's. The first C is community. So yeah, you want to like, because that means someone's following you. So you want to have a robust community, um, but you want your community to be quality, not quantity. Um, we worked recently with a client who had worked with someone before us who had purchased followers for their Instagram account purely for optics. Um, that meant for the rest of the uh, life of that account, their uh, analytics were useless because 75% of their followers could never, ever be their customer because they lived in different countries where the, the in countries they couldn't serve. So what was accomplished by that? So the, the analytics were out of whack um, and like I said, 75% of their followers were from other countries that they could not deliver their product to. So 
people will come to us and say, well, we want to have 50,000 followers by Christmas. I said, well, give me your visa card. And they go, what do you mean? I said, I can have you f have 50,000 followers for you by tomorrow. They will be completely useless, but I will have met your objective. Now, if you want 500 followers in you know, the next uh, little while, but they are 500 followers that will likely be you know, customers, um, then that's a different story. So um, having said all that, first C is community. You do want a, a high quality, uh, valuable community. Second C is content. You want to be producing content that that community engages with, that community shares and amplifies and distributes to their networks. And then the, the third C is conversion. Likes are, are nice, followers are nice, getting engagement on your content is nice, but getting people to do something as a result of those first um, two uh, areas is even more important. Do they register uh, for a webinar? Do they sign up for your newsletter? Do they book a call? Do they buy? These are all conversions that have some you know, potential monetary value. And you, know, you don't own Facebook, you don't own Twitter, but you own your website. So you want to be using social to send people to your website to take some sort of action that could lead to some sort of monetary transaction. Okay, so I guess you have already, uh, you know, highlighted some of the important metrics that we should be measuring. Uh, now, if you can also help us understand some of the prominent third party tools that we can use to measure the metrics and also for the computer analysis. So, um, I mean, some of the platform like Hootsuite and Spread Social, if that's your social media management solution, they have embedded analytics. Um, Metrocool is another one that has some, some analytics built into it. Uh, we use Rival IQ. Um, it's um, you know, quite robust. It tends to be more for agencies and service providers. Uh, it enables us to conduct social media audits, not only on our clients, but their co competitors and peer organizations that they want to benchmark themselves against. Even within the platforms on Facebook, you can select a few uh, Facebook pages that you want to track. And on LinkedIn now, you can select uh, other company pages that you want to uh, stay um, abreast of. Um, so, you know, look at social media management tools like Hootsuite, Spark Social, Metricool, Social Champ, uh, Missing Letter, Social Pilot, you know, so, um, Agora Pulse, Social Oomph, um, Octo, forgetting the last part. Um, lately, if you want to uh, have uh, AI do some of the heavy lifting for you uh, and create multiple social posts from foundational assets like videos, I highly recommend lately for that. Um, you know, again, it we're an agency and we, we manage you know, hundreds of social posts uh, in a given month. So we need tools that can scale. Um, so what we use isn't necessarily what a, a, you know, a small business or um, an enterprise would use in and of it. So do you also use any AI tools for writing social media contents or for creating creative for graphics or videos? Well, uh, we use have used AI more for um, to summarize, uh, like I've written a book, uh, as you mentioned earlier, I've, I've used AI to summarize a, um, a, a chapter from my book. I've used AI to create show notes from a transcript from my own podcast. Um, we've used AI to um, you know, um, suggest some social copy from a blog post. And the reason I mentioned all of these examples um, is because if you notice, any application of AI has been applied to a foundational asset that somebody created. We don't use AI to create from scratch. We, uh, we apply it against an existing foundational asset so that we can get you know, repurposed content from it. Um, having written a lot of blogs and have written a book and written lots of social posts, um, I have not been as happy about AI writing from scratch. It still feels a little robotic or a little wonky, but I, you know, I have interviewed people about this and written about it and gave a presentation recently about it too. If you treat AI as your second brain to have it give you 
some additional ideas for consideration or in the example I gave about, you know, it looks at a transcript from a, a, a podcast and makes some suggestions for social posts. Oh, I look at, maybe it gave me half a dozen uh, suggestions. Oh, that first one, I like 80% of it and I like it. 20% of this other one, merge them. And so again, if it just helps me be more creative and be more productive, um, I'm not at all worried that it's quote going to take our job. Um, I do think any marketer um, that wants to stay, remain competitive should be most certainly familiarizing themselves with the tools that are out there uh, and start becoming familiar, uh, familiar with them uh, to remain competitive um, and also be more productive. Well, there's, there's AI tools for copywriting. Even if you just look at chat GPT, the free version versus the paid version, look at Claude um, 2.0 from Anthropic, which uh, Anthropic was founded by people who left open AI, um, which is the makers of chat GPT. Uh, and then you look at Google Bard. And, and then if you look at Bing chat um, GPT, which is, you know, they're, where they're OEMing uh, chat GPT, they all do they quote create things using AI, but I will say if you take the same uh, uh, task across all three, Bard, Claude, and ChatGPT, you're going to get different outputs, and you can decide for yourself. Oh, Claude writes better social copy. ChatGPT does better, you know, chapter summaries or like whatever. Um, Claude GPT or sorry, um, Google Bard does a better job of. Um, I'll call it SEO and web analytics, or I don't know. I'm just, uh, uh, it, it's, it's just, these are tools for your toolkit. There's an often used phrase, a, a fool with a tool is still a, a fool. So, you know, play, learn, familiarize your, yourself and see where and how they uh, can uh, be helpful to you. Definitely. So since you were mentioning that there are a lot of analytics data that one can get, from uh, the third party tools and along with this third party tools they can get from the platform itself. Now, as a marketer, like if there are marketer or if the businesses are there, then how they can use this data, analytics data, to create an amazing social media content calendar plan for the next one. Well, um, I tend to use analytics to either confirm or um, negate an assumption. So if you think, oh, you know, people have said to us, um, our, our best for performing channel is X. And then you show them, no, it's Y. Here's the analytics to prove it. Or they think a particular piece of content or a social post or whatever is going to do, you know, great. And then you show them, no, consistently, this type of content underperforms. So we have a, a client with us um, that um, is in growth mode, is doing um, a high volume of acquisition and they're sending out press releases about each acquisition and they're just nothing happens so we're going to be doing some podcasts where we interview key stakeholders from the acquired company to introduce the company introduce who they are what they do and so on um, and the podcast will be recorded both in video form and audio form and so this richer media type of content, so there'll be the master episode, but there, are also, there will also be clips, both video and audio, and some, some poll quotes and things like that. And so it's about working smarter rather than harder with your content. And press releases, if you're a publicly traded company, you have to send out a press release due to regulatory requirements, but they don't have to be boring. Or, okay, we send out a press release as required, but what else can, what other, what, what other elements of the story can we tell about that acquisition? And so this is where analytics play, play a role because it's going to help you figure out what channels, what content perform best. Maybe, you know, uh, putting something on LinkedIn on a Sunday when um, it's less noisy gives your content a better chance of visibility. You know, there's a reason people send out email newsletters on Sunday. It's because it, stay, it gets to the top of the inbox and there's lower volume of email on the Sunday from your own work environment. 
So it's like, when is my, uh, and analytics will help you figure out when is your audience online? What kind of content do they engage with uh, most? When do they engage? And so to use all of those um, insights, or I refer to as actionable insights, what's the so what of your strategy and what's the so what of your content? Oh, we're going to keep producing blogs that nobody reads. Okay, for what reason? After a while, someone's going to say it like, why, you know, the definite, as Einstein said, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different outcome. Someone's going to ask you, why are you putting your time and energy into that if it's not giving you any return? So use analytics to inform your strategy. Now you have to experiment. You know, if you're just getting rolling with your strategy, you may not know what kind of content is going to work best, what channels deserve you know the most attention. You're going to have to get you know get everyone to agree. We're going to give this six months. And that's the other thing we haven't talked about. Regardless of paid, you know, really to get rolling with social, you need six months minimum. And if you talk to anybody in, in uh, we're related to Google and SEO ranking. And you're just getting rolling with you know uh, blogs on your website or content on your website and wanting to rank, you need six months. So um, we we often ignore the word patience. No, definitely that is what when we have seen upon that people you know, or at least especially the client they start that okay since you have started with the paid and you have to start with the social, so from tomorrow I should be start getting some other time about it. They do not think that okay you know since once we start uh, having a regular post on our social media platform the audience will be aware that okay now this brand is active on social media and therefore their engagement will be increasing its own so definitely it takes a lot of time a bit more time for uh, you know the brand to build a strong presence on social media so that their audience can contact them. I mean, some people think, oh, I, I set up my Facebook page today. Where are my sales? And you have to say, um, it doesn't work that way. You have to be, you have to help the discovery. Okay. Uh, so, Jai, you have given a lot of advice today. Any last piece of advice that you would like to give to businesses? Um, just, you know, um, don't become complacent. Um, as much as it requires patience to build uh, your you know, your strategy and your overall social media presence, it's a dynamic space. Threads didn't exist last year. TikTok didn't exist five years ago. I don't know what's going to happen next year. We'll see what happens with Twitter you know, or X, formerly known as Twitter. Uh, it's constantly changing. Ask any social media manager, oh, you know, what worked on TikTok a year ago it's for engagement? you know, may not uh, work today. Twitter has threads. It didn't have that, you know, for the first, um, you know, 12 years of its existence. So what's your threat, you know, like if you're wanting to disseminate the information, uh, LinkedIn now has um, a, a, situ a situation where you can say, uh, you know, brand partnership. So they're getting into the influencer marketing game. Every platform has, I'll call it new stuff happening. Uh, and uh, it's a you know, one of the reasons we focus solely on social is because it's enough as in it's challenging enough for us to stay abreast of everything that's happening on just the social media platforms for us to say, oh, now we got to get into website building, SEO, email newsletters. I'm sorry. Uh, I, there are other people that we collaborate with that um, do rather well in that space. Uh, we're busy enough as it is. Um, and like I said earlier, um, we find most of our clients, that's where they're the most challenged. So again, to sum it all up, um, don't be complacent. Um, you know, make sure that you're stri striving to stay abreast of this, you know, of everything that's happening in this dynamic space. <laughs> I, sh I should you know, add to that, especially, you know, AI. Uh, it's moving really, really fast. So, with this, we have come to the end of today's episode. It was a pleasure having you, Andrew, with us and getting a lot of insight on how we can use social media effectively to increase our overall brand presence. 
Thank you so much, and we look forward to have you again on our show. Glad to be here. Thanks so much for the opportunity.